it is finally time to paint this custom companion animal jar and i think this is going to be a pretty interesting project to follow because i am using a ton of techniques in this one so the first thing I did was to add some matte, opaque white glaze in certain areas. Ceramics can be a pretty tricky medium to work with when you're painting and drawing because you're always going to have that little bit of bleed and you're always going to have a little bit of saturation and then if you're doing drawings and paintings that are really dynamic and you're mixing a lot of colors you don't always know what you're going to get. So what I really wanted to avoid because there are so many elements in this piece was that everything was just going to kind of muddle together and again, that's why I use the glaze rather than hitting the underglaze and then a clear glaze all over the piece. What does the glaze do? Well, partly it really provides this super white opaque background which will make sure that these certain elements like the fox and like the mushrooms really ends up standing out. Another reason I love using the glaze underneath the painting in the drawing is because of the effect you can create with the underglaze crayons. I use the ones from Amico. I think they are absolutely so awesome and so pigmented. Just varying like styles with clear glaze and matte I think always creates some Thing that's a little bit more interesting to look at visually. Another thing I did with the crayons this time, and I haven't done this before, this was the first time, um, but I had these little lilac flowers that you can see here and I wanted to add some crayon on it. I also did the thing with the white underglaze on them. But I didn't want to push down too hard on the flowers and risk something happening, so I decided to kind of just scrape it uh, scrape the crayon and create this little dust that I then um, just flicked on a little bit with the brush and then I used some water to spray on top of it. Hopefully that will be enough for that to stay and then I'm hoping that once the glaze melts it sort of grabs onto those little powder dusts and creates little tiny spots on top of everything. I'm very excited to see how it turns out. Lastly, I had this one spot that was a little bit too much negative space and I wanted to fill it with something, so I decided to make this there real quick. I didn't put as much detail into this one just because this really is going to be in the background. I wanted to have the feeling sort of that is emerging out of the fog and I create the fog just sort of blending uh, the different colors that I'm using together with my hands. I haven't used this technique to create a fog before but I have blended things together like this, underglaze together like this and it always creates like a really really beautiful effect. So I'm very excited to see how it's going to translate into fog. It's always with ceramics, I mean it's always in the big reveal that you <laughs> really get to see if your ideas work and, and sometimes you think you've done something a hundred times and then it won't work but I am feeling really good about this piece. I, I like the decisions that I made. I hope the customer would love it. Of course, we got to see how it turns out first. And I got one more of these to paint for them. So yeah, fingers crossed.